Welcome back everyone. So we just went over how to record revenues under accrual basis accounting. If you missed part one of this video, make sure to go back and watch that so you can understand what's coming next. There we explained how revenues are recorded when they're earned, regardless of when cash is paid. So now let's talk about the yin to revenues yang, the peanut butter to revenues jelly, the Kylie to revenues Kendall Jenner. Expenses, let's, let's talk about expenses. Just like with revenues, expenses follow accrual basis instead of cash basis accounting. That is, we don't record an expense just because cash was paid. Expenses are recorded when they are incurred or when their value is used up, not when we agree to pay them or when we actually pay them. We try to follow a principle known as the matching principle. This principle dictates that we should try to match our expenses to the period where we record our revenues. Since the whole point of incurring expenses is to earn revenues, we want to pair our expenses with the revenues they helped us to earn. This gives us a better idea of the value or net income that the company earned during the period. Like revenues, expenses can occur in one of three ways. Number one, the expense and the cash payment can happen at the same time. For instance, a reckless employee at Goldfish Digger Pet Shop tried flushing a fish down the toilet, causing it to clog. We would call a plumber and pay him $100 when he finished the job. So we debit repairs expense for $100 and credit cash for $100. Or number two, we could incur the expense after we pay cash, such as when we buy inventory. Let's say we buy aquariums for $600 cash that we plan to sell at the pet shop for $1,000. We record the decrease in cash by crediting cash for $600. But instead of debiting expenses for $600, we'll debit our assets, inventory. This aquarium has future value to us since we can sell it in exchange for cash. Later, when we sell the aquarium for $1,000 cash, we'll record revenue from the sale by debiting cash for $1,000 and crediting revenue for $1,000. Now we will record an entry to match the expense to this revenue. Don't forget that we spent $600 to buy this aquarium, which has not yet been expensed. We would debit inventory expense, cost of goods sold, for $600 and credit our inventory for $600. Since by selling the aquarium, it's no longer one of our assets and we will gain no further value from it. In short, instead of recording the $600 expense for the aquarium when we buy it, we match this expense to the revenue it generates which we record when we actually sell the aquarium for $1,000. The third scenario involves expenses that are recorded before we pay for them, such as when we receive a good or service and are later sent a bill. Let's say one night we rack up a company bar tab of $800 at the company's annual sophisticated staff party. We would debit our meals and entertainment expense for $800 and credit a liability account, called accounts payable, for $800 right away. That is, assuming we're not too hungover. Accounts payable acknowledges that we've received a good or service, but have not yet paid for it. It's basically an IOU the company has an obligation to pay back at a later date. Next week, when we pay off this tab, we'll debit our accounts payable and credit cash for $800. This entry wipes out this liability, so the net effect of the two journal entries is an $800 increase in our expenses and an $800 decrease in cash. Notice that we don't use the matching principle here. Because we use the staff party to boost employee morale, we can't trace it back to a specific project or revenue that it helped us to earn. Instead, we'll expense these drinks when their value is used up, or in this case, slammed back. Like revenues, expenses can be accrued, that is, incurred before cash is spent, like in the company tab example. Or they can be deferred, that is, incurred after cash is spent. We put off or defer, recognizing the expense until later, as in our aquariums example. But remembering the terminology is less important than understanding how to create journal entries for these situations. When revenue comes before cash, we'll debit accounts receivable and credit revenue. Later, when cash is received, we'll debit cash and credit accounts receivable. When cash comes before revenue, we debit cash and credit unearned revenue. Then, once we earn the revenue, we'll debit unearned revenue and credit revenue. When an expense comes before cash, we debit our expenses and credit accounts payable. Then, when we pay in cash, we debit our accounts payable and credit cash. 
Finally, when cash comes before an expense, we'll debit our assets and credit our cash. Later, when we use up the value of the asset, we debit our expenses and credit our assets. This is what accrual accounting is all about, recognizing revenues and expenses independently of when cash is transferred. So now that we understand this general rule, let's look at it in action. Click on the video link in the description to watch us walk through more examples of accruals and deferrals in detail. Don't forget to maybe touch that like button and smash that subscribe button so that we know you, yes you, want to see more accounting videos. Let us know in the comments what kind of topics you want to see us cover next. Until then, goodbye accrual world. My gosh, that's cheesy. We put off or defer recognizing. Ex <laughs> okay.